After having finished Pokemon Fusions with both horrifying monsters and using Fusions referencing other media, I really wanted an excuse to head back into the wondrous world of Pokemon Infinite Fusions. So I decided to come back to check out the amazing brand new questline added, along with creating some meme fusions. But in case you haven't watched my previous videos, I'll begin by showing a supercut of my entire run so far. Enjoy! So we start the game off by getting told that genetic modification of encaptured animals is now legalized because just enslaving them and forcing them to fight each other didn't seem bad enough, I guess. And we are naturally tasked with going on an adventure and finding all 8 badges to become the Pokemon champion. All pretty standard stuff. So we head over to Professor Oak's lab to receive our starter Pokemon. And we get the choice between Mano, Pinecute and Ratmoth. And I naturally had to go with Ratmoth due to the nature of the run. I hereby dub the rats. Welcome to the team. Before we get a chance to head out however, our rival Bradley Shit, yes that's his name, challenges us to a battle with his mono. And for some weird reason he just keeps spamming growl so we easily defeat him by just spamming quick attacks back at him. After that overwhelming win we head for Viridian City and catch a few Pokemon along the way. Mainly the likes of Spin Eevee, Togahoot and Swintorl. It was almost time to challenge the first stream leader, Brook. But even though I had caught a bunch of Pokemon, we still only had rats as a main party member. So I thought it was about time we recruited another member to our cause. So I bought some more DNI splashes and a few spinner rack and war turtle to try to create a new abomination. But surprisingly enough it turned out pretty cool. So he didn't really fit the bill of the team, but desperate times called for desperate measures. So hesitantly we enlist the help of Wingweb the spider to take on Brock. After training Wingweb a little, we head for Pewdie City Gym, our team consisting of two determined little guys. Luckily Brock's goons weren't much of a problem, and Wingweb and Rats are relatively easily able to get through them with water guns and bites. Now the same couldn't really be said about Brock himself. He started off with a target lead which almost manages to take down Rats, but he luckily just managed to squeeze out the victory with a few bites. Next I sent Wingweb to take on Brock's Gannix, which luckily goes down with only a few water guns. And with that we got ourselves the first badge and the TM Rock too. After that whole debacle we head for our next badge with confidence. Before heading out to the cave I catch some more horrifying fusions like E-Rock the Eevee Crocodile, Switz the whatever this is and U, the axe you with a pompadour. We finally get out of Rock Tunnel to Cerulean City. And since we still only have two Pokemon on our main team, I decided it was time to try some more fusing to see if I could create some more yikers. I started by trying to fuse Axio and Crocorock. And oh boy he looks like he's seen some serious shite. Poor thing looks absolutely traumatized. Anyways he's perfect and I named him one peace. Satisfied with the inclusion of the legendary One Piece to our team, I decided it was in order to grind him up a little so he could catch up with the rest of the team. And I'm again reminded why fusing should be illegal. But no time to debate ethics. We have a team of abomination to gather and gym leaders to defeat. But before that we are yet again challenged by Bradley Shit who wants to take us on in another Pokemon battle. He starts off with Nidowile who almost manages to take down rats. So we naturally switch out to Wingweb but unfortunately it doesn't take long before he uses a super potion. Wingweb is proving to have a hard time countering him and he eventually fails. So it's time for One Piece to take up the mantle, and he actually managed to defeat Nidowile. Next up is Malus who just absolutely wrecks my whole team with takedown, and we're eventually defeated. So I naturally just decided to grind a little, and oh no, oh no. The crack finally catches up with One Piece's system, and he goes batshit on Bradley Shit's whole team with only one move. He's truly an unhinged little gremlin. Now with Bradley Shit out of the way, we make our way to Cerulean Bridge to challenge a few trainers, and catch a few Pokemon to get ready to challenge the second gym leader, Mr. And what's that? Looks like Rats is evolving. Oh no. Oh no. Hey, wanna look at my new Pokemon? Oh yeah, sure. Please leave and never come back. Here I live and pay you. Well that was rude, but hey at least he gave us a free ticket to the SSN. So it could be worse. Before challenging the Cerulean City Gym, I decided Wingweb was a little too cool for the group. So I tried refusing him in Whooper and yeah, it just turned out a little too cute for the team. So I decided it was best to just put him on the bench for now. And with that we take my current team to fight Misty. She started the battle off with Mudshrew, which I countered with one piece. Then she followed Mudshrew up with the cursed fusion of Cyndaquil and Whalmer. And I'm starting to notice a pattern in my videos and I don't like it. Anyway Sundamere manages to take one piece down and it's up to Rats to finish the battle. And since they just learned freaking Hyper Fang, it wasn't exactly a challenge. With Misty Beaten and the Water Badge in hand, I make my way south of Cerulean City to fight my way through some more Cursed Beasts and eventually make it to Vermilion City where I decided to fuse some more Pokemon. I started with Onyx and Sugma. Hey what's Sugma? Shut up. 
and it again turned out way too cool, so I tried fusing War Troll with Shelter and yeah it's just a little gremlin. But alas, I finally found something I'm happy with when I fuse Zubat and Muck, which leads to this abomination. And call me crazy but that's legit just a nutsack. Anyways, welcome to the team Mucksack. I decided to level Mucksack using the SSN, and for some reason I got kicked out for showing the guest there my Mucksack. Rude. I also showed my Mucksack to Lieutenant Surge and he just gave me the badge and told me to never come back. Rude. This event unfortunately made my little mucksack so insecure that he evolved out of shame and become cool again. So I naturally kicked him off the team. I tried refusing him with Onyx but it didn't turn out too well so I decided to just move on for now. Also Onyx has seen better days. I then got a very funny idea and evolved and auditioned to Gloom and fused him with Onyx. And oh boy he's seen better days. I call him Blarg. Welcome to the team Blarg. Furthermore I make my way west through Rock Tunnel to Lavender Town where I yet again battle Bradley shit. But Blarg is really pulling his weight and just wins by spamming Mega Drain. I also find this fusion in the wild and I just had to stop to give him a shout out. Just look at him. I also tried doing the reverse fusion and he just looks plain and comfortable here. I also tried fusing Muck and Magikarp and yeah. Welcome to the team for now hurry dirty. So we made our way to Celadon City where I decided to fuse Wigglytuff and Meshok and yeah I hate it. He's called John Satra. We also help Erica vandalize some random sewers by flooding them with water, which makes Giovanni pretty pissy since they apparently had a base there or something. Anyways, I had completely forgotten to heal at this point, so basically my entire team was down when Giovanni suddenly wanted to fight. But for some reason, I had this Shedmer dude on deck as a random capture from earlier, and he just refused to get hit even once and took down Giovanni's whole team without even breaking a sweat. 10 levels under his own Pokemon, didn't elaborate, and left. What a guy. Before challenging Erika, I decided to try fusing some more Pokemons like Swampster, Growmer, Blazemer, and Drowizard. What a guy. I also managed to make this abomination with Raikou and Shinshu. I ended up beating most of them in the team for now. So we got to the gym to take on Erika, which was surprisingly easy. I just spammed a few Hyper Fangs and oh no, what happened to your Lucario? And finish the fight with a few Mega Drains from Blarg and a few Dragon Rages from One Piece. After that, we head back to the Pokemon Tower where we receive the flute that wakes sleeping Pokemon. And unfortunately, at this point, One Piece evolves and becomes Drippy, which of course means we have to kick him off the team. It's been good, One Piece. At this point, I arrived at Fusion City, which of course houses the Pokemon Safari. And since this is a randomizer, it's a gold mine of new potential teammates. Some of the highlights from what I found during my time there was Venoliki, Sharpert, Magibro, Blask Mabo, literally just Sonic, King Warrior, Magistar, and Wanks. After catching all these new Pokemon, it was only natural to try to fuse some. So I started with Gardevoir and Snorlax, which turned out surprisingly wholesome. Followed by something not so wholesome at all, like holy shit, what was the artist of this right thing? Licky Licky and Kofagrigas turn out pretty funny. Dragonair and Jinx is just really stylish. Slugma and Cloyster scares me. Wiktrobill and Licky Tongue, what the f- And all the other ones sort of look cool too, especially Piplup and Swampert. Like, how does that even work? Before we challenge Koga, I decided to dedicate some time to grind up the team a little to stand a better chance. When Blarg suddenly evolves, and yeah, it just somehow looks even more dumb with everything now. This is also the point I decided to go pick up the XP share, but I won't be relying on that too much, since I'm constantly changing up my team. And talking about team, this is our current roster of misfits as we head into our fifth gym battle against Koga. I decided to bring John Satra, Rats and Blarg. Koga starts off with Teddy Cell, which I counter by spamming Sesame Toss until he's down. Next up is Glutte, which Rats manages to take down with a few hyper franks. Next up is Magicel which also rats takes down relatively easily and last is Pillow Art. Oh, which I counter with Blarg who manages to take him down after a few attacks. With that we get the soul badge and I decide to refuse Charger with Omnistar and holy shit that's scary. I call him Ah. Welcome to the team. With our new recruiting bag, we head towards Saffron City to casually take down one of Team Rocket's operations. Even though we are a literal child with a team of Pokemon that looks like they've been run over by a truck multiple times. And when fighting Giovanni, he barely manages to land a single hit on Blark since I just spammed Dig. What an incompetent little guy. Also a Wooga. Unfortunately, at this point, John Satter actually evolves into something that looks decent. But I decided to keep him on for now since it's been such a big help so far. But without further ado, I decided to jump straight into Sabrina's Doom Challenge. And since half my team was already fainted, I literally had to rely just on rats and a newly refused John Satter, along with a randomly cut under level Umbreon and Cloyster Fusion. And as you might have already guessed, it went absolutely horribly. So I naturally went back and tried again and literally swept her entire team with Blarg alone, literally just by spamming Petal Blizzards on every single one of her Pokemon. Can you tell I'm a noob at this? 
but it worked pretty flawlessly so I won't complain. With the 6th badge in hand we surf over an equivalent of the entire Atlantic Ocean to get to Cinnabar Island to take on the 7th gym leader, Blaine. But before that I decided to do a quick grind session where I evolved Joltik to Galventura because I had some terrible ideas and I fused some more Pokemon like Mudbat and Maglum. I then tried doing Gardevoir and Galventula and... Awooga? I tried doing the same thing with Lopunny and at this point I'm just confused. So Losis and Onyx turn out pretty funny and Magikarp and Lopunny actually looks pretty cool. And I also find this adorable Sekrom Slow King fusion in a while and I just have to give him a shout out. But anyway it's time for Blaine. And I decided to start off with Rats against his Chun Rock Go Go. And it was just a really slow exchanging of attacks that in the end Rats couldn't take. So I sent out R to take him down with Surf. And holy shit what is that terrifying abomination. Anyways R couldn't take him down so Blark takes over and gets him with a couple of stone edges. Which brings out his Wiggly Rose. And yet again I decided Blarg suited enough to take care of the situation I just spam dig again like the Pokemon intellect that I am. And it works after like an hour of back and forth. And the last Pokemon he sent out was a fusion between Mew and Dunsparce, which Blarg took down relatively easily with a few petal blizzards. And with that we got our second to last gym badge, which means we are nearing the end game. We hear some rumors going around that Team Rocket is planning to capture every legendary bird to fuse them together. So we head south towards Mount Ember to stop their plan, but it looks like we are already too late. As Giovanni manages to fuse the three legendaries and creates the first triad fusion. Looks like it's yet again up to a to stop the evil organization from world domination. And Sap Mulcoon absolutely dominates the whole squad in a matter of seconds barely without letting me get a single hit on them. It was at this point I realized my team needed a bit of restructuring. So after getting an indirect suggestion for a terrifying fusion combination, I went to work and evolved a tentacle which I combined with Mime Jr. to create this absolute horrid creature. Anyways, he's a perfect member of the team and I call him Jazz. I also yet again decided to refuse John Sather to get this extremely buff and scary Magikarp. While at the fusion grind, I also tried fusing Hexorus and Machamp, which turned out pretty rad, along with this per champ fusion. Lastly, I tried doing Jinx and Gyarados, and oh boy, I think we found our last member of the squad. With a newfound sense of determination and a finalized team of rascals, I grind. But after that I head back to take on Sap Mulcuno yet again. I start off by using super fangs on every single one of Sap Mulcuno's heads with rats before switching to Blarg, who unfortunately didn't manage to get a single hit in. Next up was A who got in one solid surf that took down the middle head. Unfortunately almost no other teammate could survive the barrage of attacks. But luckily Jazz managed to tank one hit and get one in himself, which took down his second head. After that I switched to Ginny to heal rats, since I knew he could tank a few hits alone. And with that, Rats was the only one on my team left standing. But luckily with just a few hyper fangs, we managed to take down Sap Mulcuno and achieve victory. Giovanni gets pissy and runs away. Naturally we follow him to his gym and threaten him to give us his badge or else we press criminal charges against his whole crime organization side hustle. And with that we finally get our last gym badge. Which means we can at last head for victory road to challenge the elite 4. With the 8 badges in hand I head for the victory road to finish the adventure once and for all. But before getting the chance to enter the cave, Bradley shit challenges us to a battle. I started by taking down his Belisar with a few physics from Jazz. After that I switch out to John Satter which almost gets taken out by a few dark pulses. So just switch out to R to take Genpi out, but his Asmodo manages to take R out. So I send out Rats and use a bunch of Hyper Fangs to take down his two next Pokemon, then I switch out to Blog to slowly chip away his Ampholos. Remember this fucker, he gets very important later. With Blarg almost down, I switch out to John Satter who barely manages to take out his Ampholos, along with the rest of Bradley Shit's team. Having spent the whole journey assembling the adventures of terrifying little creators, we enter the Pokemon League with great confidence. Time to finally take on the Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Laura Lei who starts off with Gallade. I didn't really have a solid plan for her team, so I decided to send us out not really knowing what I should do. But I luckily managed to get an Inferno Strike in, which took him down. Next I sent out John Satter to counter a Prima Lem, which goes terribly as he's quickly taken down. But luckily we got Blarg to save the day by using a few Petal Lances. Her next Pokemon is McKing, which Blarg again manages to do a decent chunk off of, but at last I switched him out to save in the faint, and send a Jazz instead which really didn't manage to do much. So I tried sending out Rats and used a Super Fang to half his HP, but it wasn't quite enough so making takes him out with a close combat. So I yet again just sent us out to finish the job with a Surf. And holy shit what a cool fusion! Sickly turned out to be quite a troublemaker as he takes out R pretty easily, but Blarg is a freaking trooper and takes him out with a few pedal dances. And if it ain't broke don't fix it so I did the exact same thing for Urshinep. With the first trainer down it was time for Bruno. And I oh, have had quite enough of this shit so I just spam surfs and take down Bruno's entire team alone with occasional help from Blarg and the others. 
At this point I noticed that I barely had any revives left, so I am only able to revive everyone except Jazz and Jenny, which would mean we are officially on the hardcore run of the Elite 4. Next up was a steel type Elite 4 member, Agatha. And now I just spam flamethrowers which basically one shots her entire team. What a guy! Lastly we go up against Lance, the dragon type Elite 4 member who starts the battle off with Withdrew Limb. And since A is a wider type with a greater speed stat, it weren't really a problem just using surfs when he was defeated, even though Blaine kept using potions. Next was probably Gigas who managed to take out John Sather pretty quickly. So I sent at Blarg to literally just take care of the rest of Blaine's team. And with that, we officially just have one single trainer in a way of becoming champion. And as it turns out, that trainer is Bradley Shilston himself. Having only half my team remaining didn't leave a lot of room for error. But alas, this was no time for overthinking. He started off with Houndwill, who is luckily weak against Ah's ancient power. And since Bradley shit only spammed potions, I just had to keep spamming ancient powers to eventually win. His next Pokemon was really funky as it was basically a painter fusing between Smurgle and another mom. But Blarg was perfect for the situation and took him down easily. Next up was Umtop, who is just the cutest little thing. I stand at Ah again, which wasn't the smartest idea in retrospect as none of his moves are particularly good against Umtop. But he luckily managed to still get a few hits in, which took him down. And oh no. If you remembered earlier, this was the Pokemon I foreshadowed to be a goddamn menace. And he's basically super effective against my entire team. And the only one on my team who could survive over one hit from him was Blarg, who didn't have any good moves at all against him. Furthermore, he just kept healing after every turn which made the net damage even worse than it already was. Rat surprisingly enough was actually almost able to take him down alone. But unfortunately it wasn't enough as the whole team got wiped after a good attempt. Without a good way to counter his Amphigon, there wasn't really a lot I could do. So I went back to the drawing board and decided my best option was to teach A an Ice type move. But as it turns out, that shit is expensive as frickle nuts. Without going into too much detail, the next couple hours were spent by me buying monkey paws of a shady Team Rocket member that only shows up after midnight to sell them to an old lady who inflates the buying price each day. Which is basically a get rich quick scheme within the Pokemon world, which allowed me to buy Ice Beam, which is super effective against his Amphigon. But of course, I get one shot. Well, with those hours in the drain, a Senate Blarg who miraculously managed to take down Amphigon after trading hits and using full restores for what felt like minutes on end. Up next was Coffertress, and he just wouldn't stop spamming Destiny Bond, which allowed Blarg to take him down with only a few pedal dances. But of course, due to Destiny Bond, Blarg goes down with him. And at this point, I only had John Saturn and Rats left against his last Pokemon, Schneit. And since I really didn't want to lose at this point, John Saturn champs it out and managed to take a bunch of hits, which allows me to heal Blarg. And A. Ah. And Rats unfortunately gets one shot, but I absolutely crushed the competition with two flamethrowers. And with Bradley Shit finally defeated, we go to the Hall of Fame to claim our position as champion. And we register our adventures of misfits as heroes in their field. How did we manage to win this? So we continued the game by Professor Oak telling us that only getting 8 badges weren't good enough. And we need 8 more for him not to disavow us. And I quote, not to be a bitch ass. So he gives us a starter Pokemon of Milk Tank and Ditto. I sure wonder what beautiful fusion this will hold oh, no. I guess welcome to the new team, sussy. We leave the Kanto region slightly offended but still in high spirits to take on the Jodo gym challenges. And we take the train to Goldenrod City where the first gym challenge resides. And since I realized that the first gym leader, Whitney, would have more than one Pokemon, I spun the Wheel of Mythicality and fused together Dialga and Pikachu to get our next teammate. Dio Brando from Delta Room? These fusions sure are just getting more and more bizarre. Adventure. I also from a recommendation tried fusing Rodham and Victor Bell and got a toilet. That's a reference to your house. But without further ado, we head into the first gym challenge against Whitney. And I promptly got my ass handed to me since she had both way stronger and way more Pokemon than me. So I decided to go back and fuse another Pokemon for the road. And went with Snorlax and Empoleon to get obese club penguin penguin. Anyways, we head back to Whitney and to be honest, she was acting kind of suspicious. So we just warded her off and get her first badge. Even though we already had three teammates, I realized that basically every gym leader would have a full team of Pokemon. So I decided it was fair to already give myself a new fusion and spun the Google of RNGs to get a fusion between Ursaring and Roydom, which makes Walter White from Team Fortress 2. Welcome to the team! So we make our way over to Acelia Town, which definitely has seen better days, as the entire place is completely flooded with water. Seems like someone forgot to turn off their sink again. And of course, like everything in Wither Games, it is up to the literal child to fix everyone's problems. So we receive dive from Ranimal Feller, which we use to access the flooding well to push on poor Slowpox into a hole full of shelter to get their tails bit, which naturally stops the flood because of course it does. With the town back in order, we get access to the second gym, which houses the most annoying gym challenge by far, as you have to correctly guess the order of web supremacy 
press but even though you do it correctly you have to redo it for every new web you go through. But at last we solve the puzzle and get to challenge the second gym leader, Kurt. And I start off by sending out Dio who just kinda stops time and naps the hive badge. Can't really complain though, so without hesitation we continued to Route 33 and Union and Cave to watch Violet City, where I decided it was time for some more Pokemon fusing. I started by fusing a Snorlax and Lopunny, which resulted in big okay. chungus. Still having hope to find some actual cool fusions, I tried combining Dugtree and Porygon too, and that's literally just another Among Us, isn't it? Lastly, I tried fusing Dialga and Gardevoir, which creates a psychic looking girl. But I have no idea what this is a reference to, so be sure to let me know if you have any ideas. But anyway, so far it will be funny adding big chungus to the team. So with that, we had to watch the Wild City Gym to challenge the bird type gym leader Faulkner. And again, it houses one of the most annoying gym challenges I've ever faced. But alas, we finally managed to beat it after a while and get to challenge Faulkner. And I naturally didn't really have a plan against his team, so I just spammed Hydro Pump and the Faulkner was forced to use a full restore. But Dupin was proving to be quite stubborn and almost takes down Fat P. So I used a potion to allow Fat P to survive long enough to take him down. Next up was Mimiri, who unfortunately managed to defeat Fat P after a few attacks. So he said that Dio just gets two shot, but he luckily didn't go down without a fight, as he paralyzes Miroth. So he sent out Five Nights at Freddy's Sewer's Electro Ball, which takes Miroth down. Next up, Faulkner sent out a fusion between Drift Loom and Rayquaza. He used an explosion to take both him and Five Nights at Freddy's out. I then sent out Susie to take up the fight against his Gartom. And since I didn't really know how well Susie would defend against him, I used the Transform to take his Gartom out with a Dragon Rush since Dragon is weak against Dragon. Faulkner's last Pokemon was a Yatu, who quickly manages to defeat Susie. But not before Susie gets some good hits in. So it was now to Big Chungus to survive at least one hit so I could heal Dio for a surefire win, which he luckily manages. And Dio takes Yatu out without much of a hitch. And with that, we finally get our hands on the third badge. And you know what that means, right? It's fusion time! I started off by fusing Infernip and Drift Blim, which just creates a huge One Piece spoiler. Next up I tried fusing Absol and Gardevoir, which creates this awesome looking 2B fusion. Next up I tried doing a Diglett and Ditto fusion, and for fuck's sake that literally just Among Us again. And lastly I fused a Porygon and Ditto, which created a purple Minecraft slime box. But anyway, so I decided to yeet 2B and Luffy into the team, and head towards Sprout Tower to sneak past a billion old guys pacing around so I could receive the Gold Bat Boots, which allows us to jump over small gaps. And while we were there I just decided to steal the Golden Belts statues, but don't tell anybody. But anywho, we press forward to Dark Cave. Yeah, it's literally just called Dark Cave, very creative. But it has unfortunately gotten its exit blocked by a rock slide. So we are naturally tasked with finding dynamite from a few workers there to get out. Yeah, it's a brilliant idea to just hand over dynamite to a little child. Which would sure be a damn shame if he accidentally stumbled and ignited it. Well, we barely made it out alive luckily, and arrive at Blackthorn City where the next gym resides. And Claire, the gym leader here, is usually the last gym leader you challenge in the Joy region. But that doesn't really matter since we are honestly just that good. And with the combined power of each of our reference months, Claire's team goes down smoothly. With the rising badge in hand, we head up towards a giant frost glazed mountain moon. But unfortunately, we are quickly stopped by a big gap at the top of the mountain. And since Pokemon characters can't really jump, we're in a bit of a pickle. Wait, what's that? He's actually going for it? No, don't do it! Wait, what happened? Oh, a note. When in dire trouble, try fusing Sceptile and Furret. Oh, that's weird, but I will keep that in mind for later. Still a bit weirded out by the previous event, we continued down Mount Moon and reached Mahogany Town, where they decided it was yet again time to try some more reference fusions. I started off by fusing Hexorus and Genesect, which makes Eva a 1 from Gundam, and since I'm a big fan of Gundam, I make the pristine decision of adding him to the team. Next up I fused Slugma and Porygon C to make this absolute masterpiece, followed by Groudon and Bisharp fusion which creates Dennis from Chainsaw Man. And since I love Undertale, I added him to the team too. With a newfound sense of determination, we head into another one of the most annoying gym challenges I've ever faced, where you have to shoot this Pokeball into the gold post, but you have to be extremely precise and line it up perfectly, since the entire area is the universally beloved ice physics. But no matter, I managed to beat it after like an hour of back and forth, so it's time to challenge the now ghost type gym leader, Bryce. And I started by sending out Dennis against his arm ninja, and I kinda lucked out by using the dark type move Dennis has, which was apparently super effective against our ninja, so he takes him down with just one hit. Next 
Next up, Bryce sent out this super funky Rye Blade fusion, and I decided to continue rocking with Dennis since Dark types moves are super effective against ghost types. So we easily take down Rye Blade and his next Pokemon, Dugar. But he then unfortunately sends out Vileguard who one shots Dennis with a Pedal Dance since he's super effective. So we followed Dennis up with 2B, who is also super effective against ghost types, and she luckily just barely manages to squeeze out the victory after a very spooky exchange of attacks. Bryce's last Pokemon is a Driftmans, who quickly takes down the barely standing 2B, but he sent a Dio who is also super effective against flying types and takes them out with a thunder, which nets us the Glacier badge. With the Glacier Handing Badge, we head north of Mahogany Town to the Lake of Rage. I'm sure this place won't become the most annoying person known to man later in the game. So we continue our adventure to watch Eucratic City Tower, where we find a 6 gym leader that apparently possesses psychic powers of some kind. Like, how is that thing floating? This whole place is just a giant safety hazard, and has probably endangered many people over the years. So we just file a lawsuit about the matter and settle on Morty giving us his badge for free. Satisfied with the conclusion of the lawsuit, I fuse some more Pokemon starting off his Staryu and Gardevoir, which makes this amazing Rosalina and Luma fusion. Welcome to the team, Rosalina. Next, I fused Gardevoir and Deoxys to get Hatsune Miku? I didn't know they had celebrities in this game. Still a bit starstruck, we catch some rumors going around that Unova's champion, Alder, is in town. So we head to the dance club to find him talking about some strange readings some scientists have found in the Jordan region, suggesting a Sekrom and Reshiram has taken a field to pair for some unknown reason. But Alder doesn't really trust us to handle the matter yet, so he just tells us to beat up some dancers and now is apparently fun with it. I think it's about time we'd cancel Alder on Twitter. But that's a matter for later, as we now have to complete one of the most annoying puzzles I've ever encountered in a video game, ever, where you have to blindly find switches that unlocks the doors you need to proceed. The Jordan region really has a knack for the worst puzzles imaginable, don't they? Anyways, we make it to the top and ring the bell of mythicality, which summons none other than Reshiram, a legendary fusion between Reshiram and Sekrom, if you couldn't tell. Anyways, I kinda just chuck a great ball at him and call it a day. And no, I didn't really really call them a day, I call them friend. We head back to Alder who still isn't satisfied with our work, and he sends us back to the Lake of Rage to investigate some readings suggesting the presence of Unova's third legendary Pokemon, Kiruam. So we head back to the Lake of Rage to find a light and dark stone glowing intently when we hold him close to the giant mysterious block of ice, and when we touch it, the entire lake suddenly throws solid in the blink of an eye. And with that, we enter the most annoying Pokemon puzzle to have ever been conceived. Like seriously, I was stuck trying to figure out where to go for like an hour, but when I finally tried rubbing two brain cells together I was able to deduce the correct route to get through the ice rock formation. And on the other side we find Kyriam like Alder predicted. And I just kinda shook a master ball at him and called it a day. And no, I didn't literally call him a day, I called him good boy. And you know what that means? It's fusion time! First fusion of the day will be Dugtree on the champ. Whatever wondrous creature will we get? Oh no. Next up we got Walter and Porygon who creates Creeper. Aw oh, man. Welcome to the team. Furthermore, Vival and Cuffy Grigus making Midna from Fortnite. Clap it up everybody. Next up we got Electrode and Cuffy Grigus making Dark Star's final form from Paper Jam. <laughs> Amazing. Lastly for this fuse session, we have Porygon and Onyx making Minecraft. Truly astounding. I forgot to say this in the video, but I also made King K. Rule and added him to the team. Okay, at this point we find out that the last two Joyder gym leaders are on vacation on the Sevi Islands, so we fly back to Kanto to track them down. But after exploring there a little, we find that the path to the islands were unfortunately blocked off by a reef of Corollas, which means we have to head to the utmost north point to the Sevi Islands to help the fisherman find his kid and friends at a camping trip, which rewards us with a flute to scare off Corsola reefs, which means we will finally be able to reach Boone Island, where the seventh gym leader Shuck is located. And we find Shuck meditating under a waterfall, and challenge him to a battle. I decided to try spearheading with Creeper, who just accidentally blows up the entire arena making Shaku very upset and refusing a rematch. But luckily Dio's able to stop time before he leaves to nab the storm badge. And with that, we officially only have one last badge to collect before we could challenge the unprecedented champion of the Pokemon world. But before that, I made Wario, Paper Peach, Hollow Knight character, a radio, magma lamp, and just straight up a lamp. <laughs> Magnificent! And lastly, we combined Ditto and Jigglypuff to get Kirby. Welcome to the team, you big goofy pink ball. Now all that was left was locating the last gym leader, Jasmine, who was also allegedly somewhere on the Sevi Islands. After searching for a while and surviving a freaking maelstrom, we arrive at Chrono Island, where Jasmine has supposedly been spotted. And luckily the rumors were right, as we find Jasmine there big chilling looking out on the water. Our natural Pokemon instincts kicks in and we challenge her to a duel for honor and the 8th gym badge. And I lost. 
multiple times in fact. But let's just ignore that for now and focus on the one time I didn't totally embarrass myself. So on my totally 100% first attempt against Jasmine, I started off with Dio to counter her terrifying bird with Dealy Fusion. And I just kinda spammed the Ice Beam since it was super effective which made her use up all her healing items. Which was pretty crucial to get her to do early in the fight. Jasmine then sent Terrace to rest her next Pokemon which I counter with Dennis. But after a hard exchange of attacks, Dennis faints. So I sent out King K. Rule to finish the job with a cut. Next up was Bue, a fusion between Mew and Beedrill, which I counter with Sussy since B could easily take out most of my Pokemon with only two attacks. But I learned that Sussy was pretty resilient to their attacks, which made it my strategy to just slowly ship away at Bue's health. As Susie takes Bu out with just a sliver of health remaining. With only 3 Pokemon left standing, Jasmine sent out her Agsect. But this is where I made a pretty embarrassing mistake and counter with Creeper and used the Explosion, which barely leaves a dent on Agsect and reversely takes Creeper down due to the nature of the move. So I sent out Kirby so I could use a full heal on Dio, as he would have the best shot at taking out the Agsect. And unfortunately, Kirby gets one shot. But Dio manages to champ it out and takes Agsect out with only 2 thunders. Jasmine only had 1 Pokemon remaining. Namely Suffer, who easily takes out Dio with their Night Gaze. With only two Pokemon of my own remaining, I send out King K. Rool to hopefully finish the fight. And with a few outrages, Suffer finally goes down, netting us the last gym badge of the Jodo League. All in one try, can you believe it? With all 8 badges finally in hand, we head back to Professor Oak to at long last receive the recognition we so direly deserve. But what's that? What's Cynthia and Bradley shit doing here? We then get told that there are mid sightings of a legendary Pokemon that can bend the time-space continuum at the same time over at Mount Moon. And we are of course naturally tasked with going up there to check what's going on. The journey up Mount Silver was a long and arduous one. But when we finally approached the peak, Cynthia stopped us due to the overwhelming power exerted by the mysterious Pokemon was too much to handle. So like any disagreement in the wondrous world of Pokemon, Pokemon, we decide to settle it over a good old fight. Cynthia starts with Escon C, which I counter with Dio, but it really didn't go as planned since Escon C takes Dio down with only two try attacks. So next I decided to send out Dennis Chainsaw Guy since I thought he would fare better, but he also almost gets taken down with just one hit. But luckily since Night Slash is super effective, it takes Escon C down with just a single hit. Next up is Galactic, and I stupidly enough didn't switch out Dennis for someone else, so he of course gets taken down with just one move. So I send out King K. Rool to hopefully finish the job, which he manages with a few outrages. Cynthia then sent out Paul Lechamp who used the move Circle Throw to force which King K. Roll out for Kirby. And Kirby was really proving to have a hard time doing any major damage against Polish. Champ. So I tried using Transform, but Polychamp quickly counters with another Circle Throw, switching Kirby out for King K. Rool again. But this time it luckily turned out different, as King K. Rool manages to tank 3 Earthquakes, which finally takes Polychamp out. Cynthia's second to last Pokemon is a really awesome fusion between Tyranitar and Spirit Tomb, which I counter with Creeper. Aw oh man. Next I sent out Kirby to use Transform to copy Spiritar, but the strategy didn't work as planned since Kirby got taken down quickly by Earthquake and Stone Edges. At this point I only had Sussie and King K. Rool remaining, so I sent out K. Rool and used a Max Potion due to his resistance to ground type moves, and he luckily tanks an Earthquake with his and retaliates with the same, taking Spiritar down. Cynthia's last Pokemon turned out to be Omalix, which is very bad news for us, but out of sheer luck Omelix uses Double Edge, which is a move that does damage to the user too. And it point I really didn't want to risk sending out Susse, so I used up my two last healing items I had left and used one last outrage for the road, which almost takes Omelix down. With only a sliver of health left, I sent out my last Pokemon, Susse, to deal the finishing blow, which takes down Cynthia. Out of respect she heals our team, and with that, we head out of the cave. As we approach the peak of the mountain, there seems to be an increasingly strong aura surrounding us, making our walking speed almost slow to a halt. And when we finally arrive at the side of the legendary Pokemon, everything turns wide and we suddenly get thrown 3 years into the future. The legendary Pokemon seems to be gone, but that's when I suddenly heard footsteps approaching from behind. And it turns out the mysterious figure is none other than Gold himself, and he wants to fight. But I gotta be completely honest though, he was just way too strong for our current team and he wiped them all without even breaking a single drop of sweat. The discrepancy between our teams was overwhelming, and with our profuse defeat, we get thrown back to the past. There wasn't a lot I could think of to close the huge gap in power, and I couldn't think of at all how we could stand a better chance. But that's when it hit me. The note from earlier. We got a few Sceptile and Fur to create the ultimate being. I'm honestly not ready to discover what ultimate power looks like, but here we go. <gasps> it's him!
We are now ready to take on gold. Go, Baby Yoshi. The next set of events was as you'd expect. Baby Yoshi absolutely wiping the floor with gold's whole team. Not only closing the power gap we previously had, but absolutely leaping way past it. And with gold finally beat, we get sent back to the past and transported to our room. Uh, so I guess we beat the Johto region. I'm going to bed. Alright, never mind, I just got notified of a mysterious monument emitting of dark strange energy being spotted in a Pokemon tower. Uh, I can't get any rest, it seems. But before checking out the seemingly extremely dangerous threat to the entire Pokemon kind, we needed to create a new team of absolutely memeishly good fusions. We start with Glalie and Porygon, creating the absolutely quintessential meme face. Next up, Mr. Mime and all this creates Freddy Fazbear from Deadly Company. Awesome. Um, actually, it's pronounced Lethal Company. Next up, we got a scammy looking ad with hot guard words in the area I would absolutely fall for. I have no shame. Fusing two drowses gives us just a straight up Redditor. And this is just straight up the angry video nerd. My live reaction to that information. Guard War and Zapdos creates an awesome looking Nami fusion from Dos Pies with Sassy Nature. Cheller and Porygon C creates this creature from Friday Night Funking. And lastly, we got Bonsai Buddy. Tree, Mike Dude, I don't know who is. Swedish Winnie Wine Sauce. Warg Skeletor, Happy Meme Face, and lastly Meme Face with Hands. So with our newly created team of absolute units created, we finally head over to the top of the Pokemon Tower, where a strange stone with four pedestals is placed, and it seems to require four mysterious artifacts to activate. So without hesitation, we go looking for them. The first one can be found by heading over to Cerulean City, where there is actually a purple cave just above a waterfall you can ascend. And deep inside the cave, after a puzzle where you'll have to avoid falling into pits, you'll find the first Prism Stone. The next prison stone can be found by heading over to Mahogany Town in the Jolly region, inside the cave adjacent to the town called Mount Mortar, down a waterfall inside it. The third prison stone can be located inside the northmost section of the rock tunnel, and the last stone is found inside Mount Moon east of Pewter City. We head back over to the Pokemon Tower and place them all on their pedestals, when everything suddenly plunges into a deep darkness. The tower is now filled to the brim with ghost girls trying to stop you from exiting, and basically my entire team was useless against ghost type Pokemon, except from the absolute Shadbrough, who was half Haunter, and they actually managed to do a fair amount of damage to them all, in addition to having Destiny Bon as a last resort tactic. Finally getting out of the tower, we now discover that seemingly the entire region has fallen into a deep darkness. We then meet up with Sabrina who is investigating what is going on. And she tells us to head west of Saffron City where the darkness hadn't been able to spread yet. Getting there, we discover yet another prism stone. And taking it allows the darkness to spread even further. I am starting to think we might have screwed up royally by messing with the funny looking stones. <laughs> Oops! Anyways, we head to the top of the mall in Cerulean City to try to gauge how far it spread this time. And we manage to spot that Fuchsia City is still in light. Which of course is unacceptable, so we yet again head over there and touch a funny looking stone, allowing the darkness to spread further yet again. Anyways, there's also a bunch of funny looking flowers here now that leads us into the Pokemon Safari, where two Scolipedes are looking at a weird glowing flower. Taking them down reveals a weird glowing fruit. And giving it to Professor Oki extrapolate that it's some kind of compass, I guess, which glows if you hold it in certain directions. So we just follow the glow of the fruit all the way back to Mount Moon, where there now is a big hole in the wall where we found one of the prism stones. Entering the light starts going all crazy, and at the end of the menacing corridor lurks a terrifying face. It's Necrozma. Necrozma balls. I start the battle by sending out Bro, and I noticed that I had forgotten to bring any Pokeballs. So uh, I just threw a freeze ball I had lying around which made Necrozma stuck, and I then proceeded to accidentally screw him up with three dark pulses. Whoops. I did reload the save just to check out the second phase of the fight, and this was my live reaction. Anyways, with the world yet again saved, I was now finally able to head back to bed. Good night.